Welcome back. Uh, we have more conversations before we say goodbye this morning and uh, in a bit to prevent the nation from imminent economic collapse. The Nigerian governors have advised the federal government to retire all federal civil servants who are older than 50 years. That's right. Uh, the governors also want the government to raise taxes across the board uh, as well as levy anyone earning 30,000 naira and above a monthly. The governors made the proposal at a meeting with President Muhammad Buhari in July, an online publication Premium Times exclusively gathered from sources privy to the details of the meeting. The proposal also urges the government to begin implementation of a updated Stephen Arosaye report which suggested merger and shutdown of agencies and power status with uh, duplicated or contested functions as a way to address bureaucratic inefficiency and reduce the cost of governance. Now, is such a move feasible and in, in the interest of all concerning, you know, more importantly, in the overall interests of the country? Uh, we have joining us to discuss this, uh, Joe Femi Dagonro. He is a chief strategist with Westphalia Resources in Lagos. Uh, Joe Femi Dagonro, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. All right. All right. Uh, the Stephen Orosan report has been on the, on, the on the shelf, let's call it that, uh, at Asurok for some time now. Um, and it's interesting to see that the governors are saying to Mr. President, let's implement this report. This is a report that talks about um, you know, making government leaner and more efficient. Um, people have said in, 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 in the times past that you know, government needs to get leaner and efficient. And probably they are saying now that these difficulties are good because it's going to force government to be about governance and about how much people can make. Are you, are you of that, that school of thought, looking at the glass right now as half full, that at least there's not enough money to go around and people are being forced to do the right thing and to think out of the box? Wait, can you come to that question? Like, I can hear you tell me. All right. I'm saying that um, is there is there a, a, a bright aspect, a positive aspect to the economic downturn and the the gloom in the economy as we speak, um, with uh, government being forced to look at how it can become uh, become more efficient. We hear that the governors are telling the president to implement the Stephen Oronsaye report, which looks at uh, making government smaller, leaner, and more efficient. You know, by collapsing some ministries, merging other ministries, so that we have fewer ministries and government can be more efficient. So is this at least a positive aspect of this um, ongoing economic issue we're having that government is now being forced to think about how it, be, it can become more efficient? Yes, uh, first of all, I think uh, we have to understand it, that we have uh, so many many tools and agents, uh, and some of the work that they overlap each other, I mean, we, we brought this country before with fewer ministries of agency efficiently. So I, I support the fact that we have to trim down uh, the, the, the whole apparatus and begin to look at efficient ways. It doesn't really matter whether you have one ministry or two ministries. It depends on the people and the leadership of the ministries and the leadership of the government. So just trimming down the number of uh, employees, the number of civil servants, we not only make it efficient, it depends on the system and the people running the system. So we have to clear and clear that. And the, the first thing is killing the system. The second is who are the people who are going to lead the field organization. So we have to begin to have that orientation. The orientation of the system must be there. Unless you begin to have that, otherwise we will trim down so maybe you want five dollars uh, employee, and we are still not getting the best. So we have to have a better rotation. That's number one, and we have to change that. No doubt about that. And you see, it's only in this country that you hear uh, most times in a ghost worker. If a ghost worker has a business, if a ghost worker has an account in the bank, there's something wrong. You're right. All so right. no doubt, hmm. we have to do something. Okay. Um, I mean, some Nigerians have called for, you know, the governance and politics of the country to be made so unattractive financially so that people only go there to think about how to make things better. Um, uh, in, in, in different times, you know, different parts of the world, including Nigeria, whenever it comes to laying people off, labor is always up in arms as regards that. It's viewed, you know, uh, as not, it's not viewed in good light because people will definitely lose their jobs and their source of livelihoods. 
Uh, we know the, the retirement age is above 50. Is this a move that will be in the benefit of everyone concerned and will it pay off at the end of the day? Well, uh, it, it, it's, it's sometimes it's not really funny when you think that we're having people at the age of 50 uh, retired. If it is voluntary retirement, somebody who feels maybe he cannot uh, do his job in the efficient any longer due to one reason or the other, then it's a voluntary retire. But I think the government cannot uh, just maybe force the people to retire or to make them retire for one reason or the other. In, in, in general, let me say the specific of the country that I know. And you see, they, they have this kind of system whereby you can retire early. But return early does not mean that you do not have all your benefits early, you will still not be useful. As far as we have an agency that coordinates that, and when you retire early, they still use you to go around to you do something you know within your capacity. And we send some of the people outside the country as well, you know, so to teach uh, impact knowledge, and they are paid for. So I don't know whether we have that system in this country that is so clear that a 50 year old man or woman is still very agile to do his job. And in most countries now, they are even extending their retirement to 55 levels or some, because people are living longer and they are more agile, they are more active. So if we want to reduce the, 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 the number of staff, the number of employees, it should not be because of their age. A lot of other things have to be considered. By the way, do we have the money to pay the gratuity, to pay the pension? Because that means we can retire at the age of 50 and get 50 to 80 or 90, then the government has to pay this question for 30 years. I mean, we have to put a lot of things into consideration. So I'm not supporting that idea, if at all, because I think it's just population. If at all, the government is planning that. As a citizen of this country, I'm not supporting that because having, having seen what's based around in, in other countries, I mean, with my experience, um, I think it is not wise for any government to do that. It should not be wise. And I think the government should not do that. That's my opinion. All right, all right. We, we have to leave it at that. Uh, we sincerely apologize for the connection issues there earlier. Uh, Joe Femi Dagunro, who is the Chief Strategist with Westphalia Resources in Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, sir, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. All right. Uh, it's an interesting uh, conversation that we will continue to have um, as uh, the economic issues continue to unfold. That's the size of a package right here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Kofi Bartels. Please follow us across our social media platforms on Plus TV Africa. We'll be back tomorrow with more on this program. Good morning.